Okay, so according to Purple Block 6, as of Thursday afternoon, a wide majority of y'all said that if I recorded some type of lecture via video or podcast, you would actually listen to it, watch it, read it. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to try this out um, for chapters 11 through 19, see how it goes. I'll keep this to maybe like 15, 20 minutes tops. Um, just to point out things like that hopefully you noticed while you're reading, maybe clarify a few things, um, so on and so forth. So you can either watch this before reading all through 11 through 19. However, I would say then there would be spoiler alerts. You could watch and pause while reading 11 through 19 because I'm going to kind of go through bits and pieces of it. Or you can just read all of 11 through 19 and then watch this afterwards and then kind of go back and make notes here and there. I'm not going to point out everything, obviously, there's like way too much, and I'm also not going to give you answers. I might just ask questions or say, take a note of this, and hopefully maybe during class, then uh, we'll have a more fruitful discussion. So we will see how this goes, starting with chapter 11. Okay, um, so there's a bunch of things in chapter 11 that I want you to know. One, um, especially from 10 through 11, I would like in the first, like literally the first paragraph, I want you to note how the narration by Jane Eyre changes, because it does. I mean, if that, if I, it helps, maybe look at chapter one again, in terms of things that I pointed out in chapter one, in terms of how she is narrating. And then in chapter 11, look at the first couple of lines and see what looks different maybe. Or maybe go back and look at the background PowerPoint because it is, I am actually referencing kind of a literary term that I brought up um, in the background PowerPoint. So see what you think there. I'm gonna talk about it probably on Tuesday, Wednesday, but I wanna see if you can identify it first at this point something that you may notice. Um, so a lot of this is obviously the description and introduction of a lot of different characters. And so I want you to be mindful of that. I'm thinking about initial impressions of all of our initial characters, Mrs. Fairfax, Adele, and also uh, Mr. Rochester. They are all introduced in chapter 11 in some form or fashion. And one, I want you to think about maybe what Jane's initial impressions are, maybe what yours are. Um, and so just look back at the description of Miss Fairfax and think about like, you know, um, her character traits, what type of person she is, like how she talks, what she talks about, um, like what she maybe reminds you of, I guess, here and there. Uh, um, oh, huge, huge things, uh, chapter 11, especially is the introduction of Thornfield Mansion. I talked about it on Wednesday, Thursday, but this idea of like, um, one, like this idea of description of objects and things and importance of names, like thorn fields, like what kind of connotation do you get from that? And then of course, um, the description of the mansion itself, like what does it tell you? What does it imply? Think about how we handled and perceived the red room and apply the skills we use with that with a description of Thornfield. Do you see any similarities, differences? Like, how are you feeling? Like, again, um, make note of like descriptions of places, objects, et cetera, et cetera. And so we're gonna talk about that. Oh my gosh, there's so, so much. Oh yeah, oh my gosh, please, please, please annotate the description of the mansion, like, please. Um, and especially if you're doing like entry number one, I don't know, like, no, sorry, entry number, entry number two with the care, with the paragraph analysis, you could definitely use descriptions here. Then in our conversation, of course, in chapter 11, oh my gosh, I feel like this is going to be like an hour, two hour long video. I'm hoping it's not. I'm going to like cut things here and there out. So, um, our, our initial introduction of Edward Rochester, the actual owner of the house, tell me like how Charlotte Bronte introduces him and what the effect is of that, if that makes sense. Like, you know, just think about that. So tell me about her physical description. Tell me about her character traits, um, how you perceive her, Jane's initial impressions of her, all of this stuff. Um, and then of course, um, just what she sings is very important. Again, remember that like songs, books, um, I don't know, poems that are being stated, artwork, always have like a deeper, hidden, bigger meaning, I guess, or at least there's a lot of implication behind it. So think about like what she sings and maybe what that tells you about Adele's like lifestyle, background, what she knows, what it might say. Um, 
oh my gosh, there's a beautiful dark illusion um, in chapter 11. I'm not going to tell you where it is, but there is one and you should know, okay, not that you should know it, but it's purposeful for you as a British literature sophomore who was in my class last semester because that's, you know, things to think about. I don't know. Just, just things to think about. Um, and then of course, at the end of chapter 11, something very gothic occurs. Hopefully you made a note of that. Dot, dot, dot. I'm not going to point out and so there's there. Chapter 11. Yay! Okay. Ooh, okay. So I just want you to think about Jane Eyre's like personal thoughts, her thought process, her mind, um, in terms of what she's feeling, how she responds to things, like her internal processing um, is important to note here. Um, and so just like how she feels, like she's like a little restless. I'm just going to kind of stop there and kind of go and give you a little hint there. Um, and, and in terms of, remember this is a feminist novel, or at least it's the first feminist novel, according to like, I don't know, historians and other literary critics. So just think about that. Again, um, we have an introduction of another character, Grace Poole. And I think about how she's introduced, how, what it's established, what you can infer, physical description, actions again showing versus oh telling gosh. okay and then chapter 12 is where our yes our love interest is introduced um please tell me or like be mindful of what jane thinks as he's approaching what she kind of associates him with you know and and how that might tie back to i don't know chapter two because i i did say like Hey, remember X, Y, Z about Jane Eyre when she like looks at herself, um, what she kind of views herself as. And so this is like the meet cute. Do y'all know what a meet cute is? Okay, I'm going to tell you what it is now. I'm going to also reaffirm it on Tuesday slash Wednesday when I see you. But a meet cute, meet cute is like when like our main characters like meet in a cute way. So this is like kind of a cute way. It might not be cute to you, but it's cute to me. So there's that. Um, talk about... Um, his description again anytime there is a description like you should stop and annotate and like write about like what you think or what you can infer about that um and so tell me how he's presented you know as a remember he is a byronic hero so think about how he portrays elements of byronic hero think about what our typical hero was like last semester like our you know epic hero our classic fairy tale hero and maybe how he fits slash doesn't fit that criteria I want to talk about how, think about how Thornfield changes when he's there. Um, and, and I want you to think about like, especially in literature, uh, particularly in Gothic literature and romantic literature, how places almost seem to have this, like, I don't know, like, it's almost as if it's alive, if that makes sense. Um, like, it's like not just a building, but it's a building that changes. Like, if you think about like that movie, I think it was like, monster house or haunted house or whatever like if you think about those types of ideas or like haunted houses are not just houses but they're like this like mysterious actual creature or entity that changes i want you to think about that i don't know just things to think about i know that it switches in french randomly and there's like no i don't know translation it's not like super important like i guess you could actually translate it if you wanted to um, I would say that the current audience at the time would have been familiar with the French and so going back and forth in Man of French, but you could kind of use context clues essentially in terms of how Jane responds and pick it up, but not important. So don't worry about that. And then of course, again, in chapter 12, again, all the descriptions of people and characters, um, just be mindful of that. Um, I think it's super cute. Like I did this, like I knew my traveler, my traveler right here. Oh my gosh, isn't that cute? Like she's calling him hers. Like that's cute, y'all. That's supposed to be cute. Um, okay, so when they talk, I mean, there is like heavy flirting, heavy flirting. Like I I'm, I'm kid you not, you're like, where is it? It's there. Like, in their conversations, know that they are very cute in, with one another, but you don't necessarily, or you might not see that. Um, and so I'm going to point it out, but I just want you to know that like, there's just so much. Okay, so I want you to obviously, I know that their dialogue seems very like draggy, but I do want you to try to like paraphrase or make note or try to make sense of what they're saying if you are able to, or at least like think about like his class and I guess his, um, like what he expects 
effects from other people and in conversation and maybe how Jane maybe responds and how she maybe fits his expectations or maybe how she doesn't face expectations in terms of um, and, and how, to, how he responds to that. Um, I mean, think about like any classic like romance novel slash movie slash TV show when you have like the the main guy who's like really well like popular or wealthy and then the girl and he like gets all the girls kind of but then the main girl character how she like usually responds to it and, and why he like falls for her. Does that make sense? Um, just kind of think about that idea of what you know of it. Um, and, and how you might see that in their conversation. Um, and then, okay, huge thing in this chapter are the paintings. The paintings are super, super, super important to note. Um, she talks about that, the description of it. She's painting it. Again, painting, art, literature, books that are referenced in Jane Eyre have like a deeper meaning. And so we're definitely going to talk about the different components of what she paints and what that might mean and all that stuff. So please make note of that. Um, ooh, something you want to know, it's a motif, are eyes. Eyes, they're very important. And that's kind of mentioned um, in this chapter, chapter 14. So maybe go back and look at where we see a mention of eyes, eyeballs and descriptions, and, and maybe make note of that. Um, it's kind of cute because he's like, do you think I'm handsome? And she's like, no. And he's like, what? So look at that conversation. Oh my gosh, it's like super cute, y'all. Please, please note they're cute. So then he talks about um, some some of hit the talking points beyond their flirting. I do want you to be mindful of and maybe keep track of is he talks kind of mysteriously about this idea of sin, remorse, and like reformation. Um, and so maybe kind of make note of that. I'm gonna talk about it obviously, but there's there's that. Um, he talks about kind of his past a little bit. He asks her like what she thinks about like can a person reform um, and what she she thinks about that. Chapter, okay, um, 13 to chapter 14. I do want you to know how both of their conversations ended. So in chapter 13, um, when she's like, when he she meets him for the first time and how he ends the conversation and how he ends their meeting. And then 14, when they're having a conversation again and if there's a difference in how he ends it or not. Is there, is there? There is, there is. So, and it's like cute, okay? Again, I know I'm like talking about cute a lot, like, but I promise it is. <sighs> this is really embarrassing. I don't know how I'm gonna post this or not. We'll see. So we definitely learned that like Rochester is like not like this like clean cut guy. He has a past. He has a romantic past. And so he's this like mysterious older guy. And, and so that's again a little problematic, but we're going to move past it. Um, so we learn a little bit about kind of that history. I'm going to talk about that in terms of like how women treated Rochester in the past and his expectation or how he felt about that. Um, and, and just the fact that like the things that he tells her, I don't know, is like weird, I guess. So like, and why, and I guess why he might feel like he can tell her all of these things. I mean, and I, I'm hoping that you, you are seeing like this transition of how he treats Jane. Like he does treat her differently. Um, and hopefully you're realizing that it's like very clear that like he's into her, like, and he's like, he likes her. So note that. We also see in Joker 15 that like, dude, she for sure likes him back. Like she's falling for him, like here. And was Mr. Rochester now ugly in my eyes? No reader. Gratitude, many associations, all pleasurable and genial make his face the object I best like to see. So like she is falling in, like this is, the romance is happening. It's like happening. Like it's like in Beauty and the Beast when she like, you know, when she's singing, she's like, there's something sweet. Okay, I'm not saying that, embarrassing, but you know, I'm talking about like, this is like, think about Beauty and the Beast and think about like where you saw that and you're seeing that here, like right now. Teen, something super mysterious happens, like hello, gothic literature, suspense, creepiness. So we're gonna talk about that, but make note of that. Um, and also I just want you to note that like, I don't know, in their interactions, Jane is not your typical heroine. She's different. Think about when they first met and what happens and think about now after 15, what is happening again? And in your typical romance fairy tale, like how is this different, right? How is it different between what you expect? 